interested in RNA-seq but not quite sure where to start, we're here at ASHG to learn more. Kelly, thank you for joining me here to talk about your poster. I understand you've been doing some work in RNA sequencing. Can you tell us a little bit about what your findings were? Yeah, I have a poster here talking about some RNA sequencing experiments we did with um, breast tumor research samples with a collaborator, Dr. Whitliff. He's done quite a bit of research on breast cancer over the years, and um, so we're working with him to understand the mRNA and microRNA profiles of, of breast tumor research samples. And we were able to find through sequencing and understanding the profiles of mRNA and microRNA expression some inverse relationships and some key, key um, genes that could serve as a biomarker potentially in the future. Oh, that's great. So yeah. you're getting information about both the mRNA and the microRNA in the same experiment then. Right. Fantastic. Right. Yeah, there are um, actual research samples from his biorepository that we can go back and retrospectively um, investigate different different biological questions that might be relevant to breast cancer. So it's two different library prep methods, one to look at microRNA and one to look at mRNA. We're able to do that in the same samples and then, and then make some um, conclusions about how those two types of, of RNAs may interact with each other. Very good. Yeah. Um, I, I am looking through your poster, I, I see that there was some challenges in yeah. terms of the amount of material that you had available to use. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how you've been able to improve upon small sample input? Yeah, so traditional RNA-seq methods, especially for mRNAs, um, require quite a bit of material and usually require you to either remove the ribosomal component of a total RNA sample or maybe enrich for poly A. So we are using the ion AmpliSeq um, transcriptome um, kit or workflow that allows you to take just 10 nanograms of total RNA. You don't have to process it anyway first. So it, it is really amenable to you know small sample types. In this case, we were using uh, uh, sections of, of a solid tissue. So you could take a section and get enough material from a section to, uh, to get a global mRNA expression information. Wow, which was from really all cool. from 10 nanograms. Yeah, so yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. A lot of our customers tell us that the downstream data analysis is often challenging for RNA-seq types of experiments. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how you approach that and what tools might be available for customers who are doing RNA-seq? Sure. So the, the transcriptome, the AmpliSeq transcriptome um, product is targeted still, like our AmpliSeq um, technology. So there are, are specific amplicons that interrogate each gene. And that makes the analysis very simple as well. You have one um, mapping event that, that tells you how much of a gene is expressed. So there's actually a plug-in uh, plug that we use on the instrument that gives you counts per gene and allows you to quickly um, understand in like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, gives you counts per gene and, and in a nice format that you can uh, export into Excel and you don't have to be a bioinformatician to, to understand it. Even I can do it, and I'm a molecular biologist. So it's, it's really nice to get quick gene level information in an easy format. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing what is very exciting work on RNAC. If you'd like to see more about the work that Kelly and her team has been doing, you can download the poster from SlideShare wherever you may find this video.